Hi, have you ever tried to integrate a payment system in your Flutter app? And if so, did you have problems with um, like card validation, um, authenticated with the 3D secure features, um, handling all the other card types and like addresses and so on and so on? If the answer is yes, then you've come to the right place because in this video, I would like to show you the way to do the payments um, in Flutter in much easier way without a lot of coding and a lot of business logic. Um, and to do it, I would like to introduce you to the Stripe checkout. Now, Stripe is a platform that um, um, supports like all the payment stuff, like like. Um, um, like um, payments, like uh, storing card data, um, and so on and so on, like subscriptions, all the like, payment stuff, yeah. And Stripe Checkout um, is the um, tool. Um, it's like a template, like website template, that um, also handles the UI part of it. Because normally, um, as a like, front-end mobile developer, um, you would have to create the UI by yourself. Especially that in Flutter there are not, um, there's no like official package for Stripe, um, and with the Stripe checkout, it is done for you. Um, I will show you how it looks. Um, so here, if we go to the like example page, um, we can see like some products. It could be also like a subscription, whatever you want, and then you just fill in the data. It will validate it um, by itself or you can even um, pay with Google Pay or with Apple Pay. Um, so it's pretty simple and you can customize the colors, the, the images, the prices, obviously, and so on. So it's pretty cool tool and um, it's actually very easy to use it in Flutter. And this is what I want to show you. Mm. So what we will do mm, before that, if you prefer to use um, to read instead of um, watch the video. Um, there's also a blog post and the link is in the description where, um, where everything is explained as well. So you can go ahead and check it out mm -hmm, if you prefer this way. Mm -hmm. So regarding the Stripe checkout, mm -hmm. how it works, it is pretty simple. Customer will ask the mobile app to uh, like go to pay for something, we as a mobile app, we will ask the server to create a session. Now, um, the server will ask the Stripe API to create a checkout session, and then we'll get the ID. This is displayed here. Um, after that, all we have to do is um, redirect to the checkout page, and then in the checkout page, everything will be handled for us, um, and then um, the backend should um, like handle the webhook and um, proceed with the business logic about it. Mm. So, as you can see here, um, we have the server part. And since this is the Flutter video, I don't want to code any server. So I prepared a little hack, which is um, I've created a server stop and this server stop um, will work as a server. This is basically the, an HTTP request to the um, Stripe API. And we just do it so we don't have to like create an actual server. And this is only for demo purposes. It is very important that you cannot do it like this in your um, production applications, because um, as you may see here, we are using a secret key. Um, this is the key we got from the um, Stripe dashboard. And the thing is, you cannot put it in your um, application. It is very unsafe and you may regret it. So this function should be on the backend, um, not in the mobile app. We just put it here to make things simpler. So um, what we can do is we can start um, by um, creating the Stripe session, which is something that the backend would do. And so um, we already have this and um, we have a very simple um, application. And um, 
yeah, we can just call the server function and get the session ID. Mm, to do it, we will we'll add the button and we can say that on pressed, let's make it async, we will do server um, that create checkout and it will return future string um, which will be our session ID. So we have session ID ah. and um, let's create a snack bar. with this session ID, just to display it. And then we can do scaffold of context, show snack bar, snack bar. Yep. And let's do hot restart. Um, okay, here we can, s yeah, we can leave it like this. We click it. Um, and then we have the session ID from the Stripe. Now, um, this is, um, it has like, I think five or 10 minutes, like lifetime. Um, so we can just click it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so we are getting the session ID now. Um, oh, by the way, we are just going like, um, through the docs. Um, I didn't, um, like come up with anything. Everything, um, is safe. Um, it is um, written here. So what we have to do once we have the session ID, um, well, the docs say we should um, add the checkout button and then like call some function. The problem is that um, Stripe checkout only works in web technologies, in the HTML and JavaScript. Um, so um, in order to use it, we have to use um, WebView in our Flutter application. I have already added the WebView um, dependency. And now we will create a separate page. Um, we'll call it checkout page. Um, we'll make it stateful. And here let's have a scaffold um, with um, um, body web view. And this web view will have for sure initial URL. Um, let's create a getter here for now. Mm, it will have JavaScript mode unrestricted. And let's also save the, um, the controller. So we have web view controller. And here we can create a field and save it. We'll need it later on. All right. And regarding the initial URL, um, well, we need to display some um, HTML. Um, so what we can do is I will just copy the previously saved HTML I had. All right, so this is very simple HTML. Um, with the script loaded Stripe um, library, um, from title and oh, and even an empty body. So we can say here, hello YouTube. All right. And in the initial URL, what we need to do is we need to um, encode the this HTML um, to the um, well, the proper format. And again, I will just copy it because rewriting it is like, pointless. Um, 
So we have data text, HTML base 64, and then basic we just have encoding the Stripe HTML page. All right, so we have the um, URL, which is our custom website. Mm. Okay, and we need to go to this page. Also, what we, what we will have is final string um, session ID, so we can create it right away. Okay. Mm. And in here, um, after we have the session ID, we can just do uh, navigator of context push material page road with builder um, checkout page with session ID, session ID. All right. Let's add some nice commas um, and let's do a wait here. Yeah, so now when we have the session ID, we will um, show the checkout page. And in the checkout page, we should have just a simple web view. So let's do hot restart. Click. And we have the simple web view and I'm not sure if you can see it. Actually, yeah. Um, but here there is um, YouTube and the uh, exclamation marks points. Well, hello YouTube text is here. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have the web view. Now, once we have the web view, um, the Stripe documentation says that um, we just should um, call, we just should create a Stripe object and then call Stripe dot redirect to checkout. Mm, so let's. Um, again, create this method and I will copy it because um, it's simpler. Um, yeah, so we have the redirect stripe method. Um, here we will have just the JavaScript code, um, the creating of stripe object, and we need to import the API key. And then we just do redirect to checkout session ID, session ID. Um, this is here, but I don't use it, whatever. Um, and instead of controller, we have web view controller. Um, yeah. Mm, now the question is, um, how do we actually call this JavaScript? Um, what you may think we should do is do it in like in its state to just um, redirect to um, check out right away. But the thing is that um, creating this Stripe object, we need to have this script um, imported and it will take a bit of time. So what we will do is um, we will use on page finished callback, um, which um, is being called after those scripts have been loaded. And here we can do string URL and say that if URL is initial URL, so that we don't um, loop it forever, um, we can redirect to Stripe of um, widget that session ID, right? Yeah. So let's reload. Um, we can go back. Oh, we have the snack bar. But if we click now we have some errors, uh, whatever, it works. <laughs> and probably like um, um, evaluating JavaScript needs to return something, but it actually doesn't um, really matter because we have the um, checkout page. And here we can do like, um, 4242 is the test card from Stripe that will always pass. Here it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, what we could do is we can say resized to avoid bottom inset to false so that we can scroll. Oh, we can scroll. Okay. I think with this, it should work. <laughs> um, and some name like March. And then we can have here pay. And now Stripe will process the payment and we don't have to worry about anything. After that, it's redirected to success.com page, 
because um, this is what we defined in our request here. So um, what we can also do is um, handle, do handle those um, like success and cancel scenarios. And to do that, we will just um, create a navigation delegate um, which has a navigation request. And here we can decide that if the request that URL starts with Then, for example, let's just um, return the result from uh, using the navigator. Mm. Or if the request that URL starts with um, cancel.com, I believe. Then we will say cancel and we have to return the um, decision that you can always navigate because it doesn't really matter after this point um, yeah let's reload let's go back and what we can also do is we can go here and instead of showing session ID we can say that result is result yeah like that reload here we can do like anything okay i can cannot write and pay. And then we got the redirected to success and we have the success page. And to be honest, um, that is actually everything. <laughs> so we um, just created a simple web view. Um, what you can do um, in the checkout page is here like show some um, progress indicator or something like that. Um, do not have this white screen for um, that long period of time. Um, but I cannot do this because I um, like, I just, I am not really good at the HTML, CSS stuff. Um, but here you can have whatever you want. Mm -hmm. What's important is just to have the stripe and then redirect to it. Um, and then we have the payment. Um, what I can show you is I can actually go to the dashboard, hopefully, and I can show you that uh, with the payments, we have the, yeah, those are the current payments, yes. Um, so yeah, so we have them in the dashboard. They actually worked on the test data, obviously. And if you want, you can test it by yourself. Um, Stripe um, to create the account is free to use. Um, you have to activate it, but it still doesn't require you to pass any um, card information, so you can play with it um, as you want. Please do not do the server stuff in the application um, because you may regret it very, very much. Um, all right, I think that's everything. Um, the code um, is available on GitHub, link in the description, um, the link to the blog post is also in the description. Um, this important point, this only works on mobile because we are using WebView. It will not work on the, um, if you are using Flutter for web. However, I know how to do it, how to, uh, how to make it work in web. And this will probably um, be the topic of the next video. Um, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if like more technical, um, videos are more appropriate than the UI designs that I usually do. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.